Since the Large Hadron Collider first started up on September 10th, 2008, it's been at the centre of many incredible discoveries. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at these Large Hadron Collider discoveries. An intriguing Large Hadron Collider discovery. Particle physicists around the world are intrigued with the latest data from the Large Hadron Collider Beauty, known as LHCB detector, which introduced evidence as an unknown discrepancy between electron and muon behavior. This detector monitors proton-proton collisions as well as the rare decay of B mesons, which are particles containing beauty quarks. The experiment has discovered a difference in the rate of decline in muons compared with the one to electrons. Rare decays are a unique method that particle physicists use to find heavy particles. They do not just hurl protons at each other and look for new particles in the aftermath. Instead, it focuses on the minute variations in every event. The rare decays can hint at the existence of unknown particles, which the researchers can piece together after many experiments. The standard model theory explains that leptons, like muons and electrons, are identical in the forces they obey, except for their mass. It is expected that the B mesons decay at the exact same rate to muons as they do to electrons. However, the LHCB calculates that it seems to decay 15% less often to muons than to electrons. Physicists are excited for this new model to be confirmed in experiments since it will prove there is more to lepton treatments than only the standard model. Over the years, there have been various discrepancies found between electrons and muons within experiments like LHCB, although none of them panned out. After more data was collected and investigated, the differences disappeared, and the standard model was once again the leading theory. Physicists have been trying to prove their theories that leptons have more differences than just their mass, but have been unsuccessful so far. These new findings are significant and can potentially provide the proof needed to beat the reigning theory finally. The evidence has statistical importance of 3.1 sigma, which means that the statistical fluctuations meet the minimum requirements for new physics. However, it should be noted that the 5 sigma is the ideal standard to prove a discovery in new particle physics. Since there have been many discrepancies, physicists are excited to find concrete evidence of this decay rate difference among electrons and muons. They believe there could be some truth to the pattern. There are still many theoretical uncertainties that the researchers need to consider, especially when comparing their results against the baseline standard model. Theoreticians have been eagerly updating their proposed models since the results of the LHCB's experiments were announced. This discrepancy will need much more research and data before anyone accepts this new particle and model. The LHCB is currently down for maintenance and will return next year with upgraded hardware and detectors. There are other experiments in Japan and Illinois, USA, which can help corroborate this rising theory and shed some light on the differences between muons and electrons. However, physicists are trying not to raise their hopes or hype it too much, just in case it is another fluctuation. CERN makes a bold push to build a $23 billion super collider. The European Particle Physics Lab, CERN, is aiming to build a 100km supercollider worth $23 billion in the hopes of uncovering the Higgs boson's properties. They hope to take the next step forward in high-energy physics with this enormous circular machine. Although the CERN Council approved it last summer, they still need global assistance in order to fund the project. The new collider is designed to collide electrons with positrons, their antimatter partners, to help physicists study the Higgs boson particles. At this moment in time, it is expected to take around 20 years to build. The device will be made in an underground tunnel located in Geneva, Switzerland, near CERN's headquarters. Although the council made the initial step and approved the project, it is not yet entirely accepted and moving forward. Since it is a massive undertaking, it still needs a final go-ahead from leading councils and investors. However, 
It gives CERN the chance to dive completely into designing and researching this collider and setting aside other responsibilities for the time being. They have the opportunity to focus on a different topic and create alternative designs for developmental research. The CERN Council is excited by the encouragement and potential financing from European countries to pursue this project. They gave unanimous support to begin this monumental task and take a significant step forward in particle physics research. There will be two stages of development for this project, an electron-positron collider and a proton-proton smasher. CERN will first build their collider to study the production and effects of the Higgs boson in greater detail which will take until the middle of the century. In the second half of the century, this collider will be replaced with the Smasher. Their goal is to reach collision energies of about 100 teraelectron volts, or TeV, to search for new particles of forces and update the current standard model of particle physics. The most powerful proton accelerator in the world is currently at 16 TeV. The technology for this stage of development does not yet exist, so it will be the focus of a lot of study and experiments in the next few decades as they prepare for it. The proposal is gaining a lot of traction and praise for its detailed and ambitious yet practical strategy. CERN is looking towards a bright future and hoping to pioneer the field of particle physics. Other experiments and organisations around the world are encouraged by Europe's endorsement and the potential for international participation. The CERN lab currently operates a collider called High Luminosity LHC, which they will continue to run while building the new collider. Their plans estimate that the 100km tunnel and collider's construction will begin in 2038, only if they receive adequate funding. It might not be enough only to have financial backing from Europe. Ideally, countries like the USA, China and Japan would be involved and join together to form an international physics organisation to help see the project come to fruition. Physicists find ultra-rare, triple glue ball particle after 48 years. It has taken physicists just under half a century to confirm the theory about the triple glue ball particle. This particle, known as Odoron, was first predicted by scientists in 1973, but was never seen in the real world. It is an ultra-rare and short-lived combination of three gluons, which are tiny particles. Scientists theorized that the Odoron would occur when protons smashed together at extremely high speeds, although they could not figure out the exact conditions needed. Odorons are unique particles formed with three sticky gluons, which serve an essential role in the makeup of protons and neutrons. Gluons carry the strong force, one of the fundamental forces of the universe that glue quarks together and allows them to form protons and neutrons, then binding them together with atomic nuclei. When protons smash into each other in colliders, they break apart nearly three quarters of the time. In a quarter of the experiments, though, they bounce off each other and survive the collision. This could be due to the exchange of some gluons between particles during the interaction. Proton-proton and proton-antiproton collisions exchange particles and sometimes result in a glue ball, where two or three gluons emerge. Although scientists had already witnessed a double glue ball, they recently confirmed the existence of the Odoron, a triple glue ball. After spending decades examining data from two colliders, scientists have uncovered enough conclusive evidence to indicate the rare particle's existence. Researchers collected information from the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, in Geneva, a 27km circular atom slammer that discovered the Higgs boson and the now-defunct Tevatron in Illinois, USA, which is a 6.3km long collider that slammed protons and antiprotons together. The researchers theorized that the varying rates in the two types of collisions would reveal odorons, because there would be a minute difference between the frequencies of protons bouncing off of antiprotons and other protons. They instituted a mathematical approach to compare the data from the two colliders since they occurred at differing energy levels, producing a graph they then called the money plot. This plotted graph reveals the existence of the odoron in the space between the two types of collisions. They do not line up exactly, which implies the particle exists. It also has a five sigma statistical significance, solidifying the proof and reaching the gold standard in determining new particles. 
The odds of this gap occurring without influence from Odorons is about 1 in 3.5 million. Despite having predicted its existence nearly 50 years ago, scientists argue that the Odoron will not alter any aspect of the way we approach or understand physics. Some researchers even reject it being considered a true particle, arguing that it is only a quasi-particle since it is temporarily arranged of smaller particles. Regardless, the recent evidence is crucial to the science community because it confirms the theory about the different rates of collisions. The 1973 prediction was correct after all. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.